Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my Dallas Marathon training log. It has been six weeks since my last video. I took a little bit of a mental health break. I ran the Omaha Marathon and visited my family up in Omaha for some of that time. Uh, I have some big changes in my training. I've completely scrapped what I was doing and started over. So I'm gonna go into that in a little bit. First things first, I was on the 1609 podcast I think it was episode nine for them. So you can find them on Stitcher, iTunes. Check that out if you want to. Getting into um, the actual training for the last six weeks is kind of split into two phases. So the first phase is the two weeks before the Omaha Marathon. And then I've had four weeks since then to recover and change things up. So the first thing I'm going to do is just show some stuff that I recorded while I was there. I went to a Nebraska football game, lost unfortunately, and I had recorded a bunch of pre-race preparation stuff, but I'm just going to scrap all that and I'm going to do that again for the New York City Marathon. New York City is in two weeks and so next week I'm going to go over all of my race prep for that, you know, goose strategy, pre-marathon checklist, pacing strategy, all that fun stuff. We are seven weeks out from the Dallas Marathon. I'm feeling really good right now. Ready to get in a couple hard long runs, a couple hard tempo runs, and then really uh, kill it on race day. I'm, I'm thinking that I'm in shape to run a PR even on a tough course in Dallas. So the result in Omaha was 241 low. I ended up taking second place behind a guy named Corey Cool. Uh, he's from Manhattan, Kansas, I think. I didn't actually get a chance to meet him at the end of the race. So I don't think I would have wanted to run 233 in any case. That would have just put me 
too far into recovery to uh, hop right back into training after the race. So it ended up being faster than the last couple of years. Those were 244 and 247. So the reason I wasn't 100% happy with my race in Omaha was that I really planned to progress down to my goal marathon pace, which is about 535, 540 per mile. I had this little pacing chart um, that I had come up with in the week before the race. And I was good through about mile 13, but then after that, I just, I couldn't dip down into the 540s. It was just way too hard of an effort. Even when I was running in the sixes, I'll show you my actual race. So you can see, you know, first five miles were all above six minutes per mile, but I could tell early on that the effort was higher than what I wanted it to be. You know, these are supposed to be really easy miles. I had a couple of really easy days going into the race, so my legs were feeling pretty good. Weather was perfect on race day, but I just didn't have it. And I think part of that is that I had really pushed the pace a lot in the last two weeks. I was trying to force workouts. We've had bad weather in Dallas and the workout paces weren't matching up with, you know, my expectations for my marathon goals. And so rather than waiting for the weather to come around, I tried to hit those paces on days that I shouldn't have been hitting those paces. And I was just, I think aerobically, I was never recovered in that two week period before the race. For the rest of the race, you can see I got down. I actually did run one mile at 542, but I just knew with 13 miles left to go, this was going to turn into a death march if I didn't slow down. So at that point, I backed off and I just stayed in the low sixes from then on out. I never blew up, but I never had another gear to get into. So where I would have liked to run a 237, 236 maybe, I ended up running 241. But I have another chance to do this right at the New York City Marathon, so we'll see in two weeks if I can do better. So enough about the Omaha Marathon, let's get into the training changes. This schedule was stolen from Elliot Kipchoge. Um, I don't feel too bad about switching up in the middle. You know, it's just periodization as always. The workouts that I did uh, with Daniels, all the super long tempo runs at a fast pace, VO2 max at 5K pace, those were all really good for that period of training that I was in. But with less time to go until the race, I think it's totally appropriate to change things up and be more marathon specific. So when Elliot Kipchoge put out his last five weeks of training before the Berlin Marathon, I was all over it. It looked like a really fun schedule to me, and so I've gone ahead and adapted it to my goal marathon paces. So breaking the schedule down, on Monday every week, it's a fartlek. It's either one-minute reps or three-minute reps, and there's this uh, lactate threshold four by 10 minute workout as well. I'm only doing this workout twice. Thursdays, it's a track session. These are long intervals at about 8K pace, maybe 10K pace, depending. Uh, they end up being somewhere between eight and 10 miles of total volume. So those are really, really good workouts. Those have been my favorite so far. And then on Saturday, these are all hard long runs. I've done these um usually it's like two miles warm up two miles cool down and then the middle 16 miles i'm running right at six minutes per mile maybe 605 and that's with kind of tough weather and 120 miles per week so once the weather cools down uh i expect that i'll be able to run some of these in the 550s so the last thing to call out is the new york city marathon falls right where I would want to do my hardest long run. So I'm gonna try and fit that right into my schedule. I am taking a couple of days easy before and after just to make sure that everything is good, but I wouldn't be surprised if I'm back into doing an interval workout again that Thursday after New York City. 
So the final thing to get into today is the actual training log for the last six weeks. So starting with the Omaha Marathon, I got in 100 miles that week, 100 miles the next week. No special workouts or anything. Recovery was just a lot of doubles, nothing super long. I only did one 10 by one minute fart leg during that time. But I got started with the Kipchoge schedule on September 25th, and I did that four by 10 minute workout. Still wasn't totally recovered there. The thing that you can't see here is that I had started to wear my heart rate monitor on every one of my easy runs. So there's a drastic change in my average pace. So the week of the marathon, the week before the marathon, I'm averaging 647, 646. Start wearing my heart rate monitor and it's 723, 658. And you know, I'm, I'm feeling much better on my workouts, which is the, the main thing, but it's strange to be running all of my easy miles at like 715, 730 pace day to day. Starting to get a little bit faster, but hey, as long as it's easy and I can run fast workouts, I'm not gonna complain. So I don't know how much I want to go into the individual workouts, but I'll call out um, the mileage itself was, you know, I'm, I'm hitting my peak for the season. I ran 110, 121, 121, and 116. I will go ahead and call out a couple of the last ones. This 13 by 1K workout that I did on Thursday, uh, definitely my best interval session ever. I'm averaging for eight miles, uh, 515 per mile. So that's kind of the pace that I'm gonna be looking at running for the eight mile turkey trot, the Dallas YMCA turkey trot. That would be 42 minutes for the eight miler. That might even get me on the podium. So that's gonna be my true fitness test there. I, I actually thought that I was gonna be running that workout at like 525, 530 per mile. So I was really, really thrilled with that workout. Um, the 25 by one minute fart lick, that wasn't anything special. Good long um, marathon course run. But again, 69 degree dew point for that run means can't run it exactly at the pace that I would want to run it at. And then finally, I did this uh, 2K, 1K workout last Wednesday night. And this was kind of the first great weather day that we had for the entire fall. So with that workout, it was 2K on, 90 seconds where you start walking and then you end up jogging by the end of it. And then 1K, do the same, repeat five times. So all in all, 15K of volume. It ended up being right around my half marathon PR. Couldn't have been happier with the pace. So looking forward to next week, it's the week before the marathon itself. So I've got, it's kind of an easier week, 13 by three minute fartlek. I've already done 18 by three minutes, so that should be a piece of cake. I'm gonna try and run that also around half marathon pace, 530 per mile, give or take. And then I've got a 14 by 800 meter session. Finally, on Saturday, assuming we have good weather, I might keep it to like 18 miles, but I'm gonna try and do it at sub six pace for the total run. I'm gonna try and get out on the Dallas Marathon course again and just, you know, run based on heart rate at what I think marathon effort's gonna be like, and hopefully I'm within, you know, 15 seconds of my actual marathon goal pace. So I hope that you've enjoyed this episode. Hopefully it's not another six weeks before the next one. I'll try and be back on here next week to talk about my race plan for New York City, plan out my nutrition, my pacing, everything that goes into running a marathon. So see you soon. Thank you.